the hard actually to do. <laughs> so then I'm just going to turn, I, I'm going to turn head over to Pastor Sister Becky, and she is going to start. As most of you know that we have a, actually, you know what, I'm going to have, um, Pastor Steve, will you stand and pray over this service? Jesus' name. I would like everybody to turn around and look at our vision and our mission of this church. And we're going to read this together. We're going to emphasize on that part where it says to make an impact. So I'm gonna, we're going to start with our vision. It says to build devotional families, devoted families in Christ who worship God, share Christ's hope and love, and ministers to each other's needs. And our mission emphasize on to make an impact in the lives of our community by proclaiming God's love. We serve a God of second chances. We cannot make an impact or reach our community if we do not have integrity. It's important that we know, that you know that everything Pastor and I do is to protect the integrity of the ministry, church, and you. So everything that we do, and you will find there's a lot of things that will come to you or will say to you because we do protect the integrity of this church. We, in, we protect the integrity of each person. We protect the integrity of the entire congregation, and we protect the integrity of our family. Before we go into Vision 2022, we're going to re re recap on some of 2021. Okay. Last year, in 2021, um, we said that it would be a year of restructuring, and we did that. We did a lot of restructuring during 2021. Restructuring. Let's, let's, let's go over the, the definition of that. A reorganization of a company, organi organization, or system means to change the way it's organized, usually in order to make it work more effectively. Uh -huh. Restructuring within the leadership, administration, or an individual, and that did happen. We've seen that happen. We are closer than ever before before the return of the Lord. He is getting ready to pour his spirit out onto all flesh, and we are seeing a lot of that happening. Come on. A lot of that happening. God is really starting to deal with people's lives. Even people that we never would have thought that would ever come to church or came to God, they've got this some kind of burning that's happening within them that they need some type of life change. We need to be ready and in the place to disciple them. So that's where we all come in. We've seen a lot of people come into the church here in just the last few months. And we are looking at our leaders going, we need to be in a place where we're able to disciple. We need to be in that place where we're able to disciple these people. 
the Lord is calling for commitment, which is a huge thing. You have to be committed. If you're going to take over a leadership role, you have to be committed in that leadership role. You have to be held accountable. You're accountable. That accountability is so extremely important. So when you take over a leadership role, it's, you're held in account, accountability. Or God will take it away and he'll give it to someone else. Like in the scriptures, the five, the two, the one talents, according to their ability. Amen. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> you know what? She said something. See, see, this was vision 2021, and we saw some of it happen. Amen. Amen. We saw where there was a restructuring going on. We saw where there was things uh, going on. And that had and that the Lord is pouring his spirit out on all people, you know, you know, and I didn't mention and I didn't mention this here earlier, but we also need to keep Jeff and Danielle in prayer. They're having band problems and they wasn't able to make it here here. And then there was someone else that had that had called. Lord, help my old brain. Yes. Rochelle, Rochelle and Mike, they. A, we're also running fevers, too, so they couldn't be here, too. So oh, we're just going to trust in God. But, but the Lord is, is pouring his spirit out. We've seen so many lives come in and be changed. Amen. Yes. Danielle's a different person because of God. Yes. Jeff is a different person because of God. Megan, who isn't here, Megan, who isn't here. Care what a life change we are seeing. Yes. We're seeing people get on fire. Amen. You know what? What? You know what? Fire purges. Amen. Fire, amen. Fire cleans things. Amen. Fire brings all the impurities to the top. Amen. Who wants the Holy Ghost and fire? Yes. Amen. 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 You've got to seek. You've got to seek for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus come to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. The fire will change our lives. Amen. Come on. Come on, Hallelujah, folks. Jesus, yes. I'm talking about the fruits of the spirit, amen. Uh-huh. And then we and then so 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 I better slow down and just focus on this. This amen. Let's let's also talk about what else did we talk about in vision 2021. And this is where I feel we as a whole body did not apply fully to 2021. We, 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 as a whole, as a whole, I feel like that we did not apply the principle of first fully to its full potential. It's so simple, folks. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Putting God first, being intimate with God. Amen. Getting, amen, sitting us to the side and putting God in her. God, what do you want? God is looking for commitment, accountability, putting God first in all decisions, not just some, but all in places we go, things we do, things we say. The principle of first physically, mentally, financially, and spiritually. So many distractions came in and distracted us from, from the prize of this, that is before us. And guess what? Whenever we put God first, everything will fall into place according to his will. But we must put him first. Can we say amen? amen. <laughs> we think if it doesn't go the way that we want or, or, the, or, the, or the way we think it should go, amen, things are not falling into place. But come on, folks, if you put him first, he will rock our world. You know what? He... He may even take our world and turn it upside down, and he does that. Hello? Can I ask a question? We just read. Let me see those glasses again. There we go. We just read our mission statement to make an impact. An impact. Can you imagine what would happen to Monroe County if we Get in the right place with uh, God, and we make an impact in our county, huh? Whew. 
But can I ask this question? Are we making an impact in our community? I'm talking about us as a whole. Are we applying the principle of first? Do we have unity? Or are we selfish and too busy fighting each other and fighting the will of the Father? Whenever we fight the direction of the pastors that God himself has placed over you and who is responsible for you and watches over your soul and is held accountable, we don't take this position very lightly. We are accountable for what we do and what we don't do. And let me tell you something, there's times I don't do and, man, I get a spanking from God, and it's worse than any spanking you'll ever have physically. Hello? Hello? But let me tell you something. This pastor, these pastors right here, we want to please God. You know what? And we're going to do what we have to do to watch over your souls. Amen? What about being too busy fighting each other? And matter of fact, I have had people from the outside looking in call me. Hello? Now, folks, this is about to sting, but it's the truth. And, and in order for us to go into 2022 in the right place, the right mindset, we have to tackle this. Hello? I've had people from the outside looking in call me and ask or say things like, what is going on? It doesn't look good for your church. I wouldn't want to go to a place like that. And they know that there is feuding going on in the body by the comments that are on Facebook. Let me say this. If you are hurt, tell it to God, not the whole world. If you are hurt, tell it to God, not the whole world. God is bigger than this world. Amen. Hello? He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. If God is for us, who can be against us? You know what? Amen. I heard a message. Amen. Does justice here, justice here. We, we, we have to quit giving the devil more credit than we give to God. Amen. Amen. God is for us. Who can be against us? Amen. Hello? Come on, saints. Let's be Christ-like. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like. If you are only posting it to be a jab or to hurt someone, and trust me, God knows if you are. If you are only posting it to be a jab or to hurt someone, and trust me, he does know. He, he knows the very number of hairs on our head. Then let me say this, shame on you. The enemy, and then I want to say, say, I want to say, say, say this here boldly and in the, 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 and in the authority of the Holy Spirit. The enemy is busy having you fight the wrong battle. We're not fighting flesh and blood, amen, but, but, amen, we, we are fighting against darkness, amen. And let me tell you something, God is greater, God is greater. Get that in your spirit, amen. We are not fighting flesh and blood, but let me tell you something, you are fighting evil, amen, and then we got to handle it spiritually, amen. How do you handle it? On our knees talking to God, not Facebook. I don't mean to be, I, I don't want to just, uh, just uh, I, I, I guess, it, I, I guess it's, it's called meddling. But, but let me tell you something. I felt this in my spirit this morning. The, the, the enemy is busy having us fight the wrong battle while people who need us are dying and going to hell. All because we're stuck on our own desires, our own wants, our own feelings. So I ask this one more time. Do we have unity? Are we making a, a um, impact? Or are our actions hurting our integrity in the community? Second chance ministries. 
it isn't just us. Second Chance Ministries. This is your church, church, Donald. Erica, this is your church. Gene, this is your church. Dad, this is your church. Caleb, this is your church. Jamie, this is your church. Are we making an impact in our community? People are counting on us. Or are we hurting our integrity in the community? Are we putting God first in every aspect of our lives? Do you trust him? I'm going to leave. I am going to leave a blank here. And then you fill in the blank. Do you trust him in our finances? Hello? What about our ties? It's not our money anyway. It's his. He's just asking for 10% of what is already his. Amen. Do we trust him in our family? Do we trust him with our kids, our spouses? Do we trust him in our jobs? Do we trust him at our workplaces? Do we trust him in our everyday activities? Do we trust him enough? Putting God first takes true commitment. Commitment to God. Commitment to your Commitment to your pastors and commitment to the body of Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is the word. Hello? Amen. Greatness is not the, the, the determined. We had a, we had a leadership meeting here, here last uh, month. And then I went over, I went over a bunch of this there. Greatness is not determined by attendance, offering, or size of our building. Yes. Hello? Amen. It is reflected. Listen, it's talking about us as a body of Christ. Talking about us. It is reflected by being all that we can be. Amen. We all can push a little bit further, right? We all can go a little bit further, right? We all can give a little bit more. It is reflected by being all that we can be in the place that God has placed us. Today, I, today I believe we have some that are not living up to being all we can be. We are focused on ourselves. We're focused on our hurts. We are focused on ourselves and not the fight at hand. So then I ask this question, then I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Becky. Second chance stands at the edge of uh, at the edge of greatness. Amen. And it seems like every time we get to the edge, boom, something happens. We are attacked or something, and then we retreat. Today, today, second chance, we need to de- 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 we need to decide whether or not we will enter into greatness. We are at the very beginning of a new year, 2022, and the Lord has spoke to us loud and yes. clear. Amen. And then Amen. before I, I turn it over, our attitude is the primary force that will determine whether we succeed or fail. That's right. So moving on in, in, in 2022, our attitude is the primary force that will determine whether we're going to succeed or whether we're going to fail. The Lord gave us three words that we need to focus on for 2022. If we are here or if we are to move in the greatness, we need to apply ourselves. So number one is application. The action of putting something into operation. We need to seek. We need to attempt to find something, attempt or desire to obtain or achieve something. So we need to seek what we want to obtain. We need to seek God. And then the third one is effectual, being effective, producing or able to produce a desired effect. If you all remember back um, from Mother's Day message last year, 
It was, who are you a product of? What are you producing? You're a leader. All of us are leaders. It doesn't mean a leader in the church. I'm talking about everyone. Who and what are you producing? What are you producing within yourselves? And what are you producing in others? Thank you, sister. All right, now moving into 2022, let's just move on, amen? Amen, we're going to get on to some positive stuff, amen? Thank you, Jesus. 20, 2021, it is behind us, amen? Now we're going to move forward, amen? And then we have a lot to uh, cover. We have three words, amen, that the Lord spoke to us. Application, seek, and then effectual, amen. We have to be effective, amen. And so then this is going to take more than one week, possibly more than two weeks, weeks, but we are going to cover this, amen. And then let me say, Chase, we got to do what we have to do to, to get our fans back up here, brother. Woo, it is warm up here. Hallelujah. But then I am going to uh, start Envision 2022, and, and uh, brother, brother, I thought you was about to, about to preach it, and then you're about to find out why. If you got your Bible, turn to James chapter 1, amen. <laughs> Actually, I just about said, come on up here and preach it, <laughs> amen. And you know what, uh, I, I want to... St- I want to uh, read verse 21 through through with 27, but uh, I I think I think that we're going to back up some and go to uh, verse 13. Whenever you have it, say Amen. All right. Starting in verse 13, it says, "Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God." Cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Can we say amen? And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no parableness, neither shadow of churning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Let me say that again. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Now going on into verse 21, and this is where where I and this is where I thought Pastor Steve was going to start preaching. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superflu and superfluity of, of naughtiness, and receive with meekness. The engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Let me tell you something. That, that scripture is so powerful. Let's read it again, and you read it with me. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your soul. And then just understand this. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Let me tell you something. The truth is what sets us free. The truth is what sets us with, sets, sets us free. You know what? And then, and then who? And then whom the Son has set free? Because Jesus is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. But he is the truth. Amen. And then whenever we take the word, amen, it is able to save our souls. Whew. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And straightway forgets what manner man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. 
he being not a, a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And then if any man among you seem to be religious. Hello? Let me say that again. Seems to be religious. Seems to be religious. I could stop right there and just start preaching a whole different sermon. Hello? If any man seems to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Come on, church. Come on, listen to that. Pure, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. Amen. Amen. James tells us that we should be doing three things. Amen. And then Pastor Steve was talking about acting, that we need to act upon your word. But there's, but there's three things in these scriptures that we just read. And the very first thing is, is that we need to be accepting the word. Second thing, we need to be acting on the word. And then third thing is practicing the word. Amen. Amen. We have to apply the word. Not just be a hearer of it, but we have to be a doer. Amen. We have to act upon his word. You can claim to be spiritual all you want. You are known by the fruit that you bear. Amen. Our Bible is our instruction manual, so we must read it and put it into practice. Let me talk about my B.C. days. Before Christ, putting a shelf together, freshly married in San Diego, putting this little stand to together. Who needs instructions? I'm a man. I'm 20 years old. I'm a man. I've experienced a lot. I could do this. Here's the instructions. Who needs them? I'm not going to tell you what happened afterwards. B.C. B.C. It was not pleasant, was it? She had to go buy a new stand. I experienced something that day. Amen. <laughs> the Bible is our instruction manual. We must read it. We must live by it. We must follow it. Amen. Amen. So, the, so then the very first thing we must do is accept the word. Just as you can't put together a, a stand without reading the instructions. Lies, likewise, we can't live the life God wants us to live without reading and studying his word. Verse 21 says, says this, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Get rid of. Get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Who is your association? Hello? What do you have a hold on that is keeping you from going further spiritually? What idol do you have? Hello? What sin are you holding on to keeping you from moving further with God? So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word. Accept the word. Accept the word God has planted in your heart for it has the power to save your souls. Get rid of, put away, lay aside. According to the Greek, this is a once for all action. Hello? Get rid of. Why should we do this? Progress in our spiritual lives cannot occur unless we see sin for what it is. Let me tell you something. Our heart will deceive you. Hello? Every man seemeth right in, in his own eyes. We justify sin. 
We can't trust our heart. We can trust Jesus and what the word says. Hello? Hello? We have to see sin for what it is. Quit justifying it and decide to reject it, to put it away, throw it away. Do whatever you got to do. Amen. Ephesians says this, throw off your old sinful nature and your formal way of life, which, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Amen. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Amen. Be ye holy because he is holy, right? Amen. And after we get rid, rid of, then we need to humbly accept the message of God. Seeking to, seeking to um, live by it because it has planted in our hearts and becomes part of our beings. Amen. Trials and temptations, folks, cannot, cannot. Let me say, let me say that again. Trials and temptations cannot defeat us if we are applying God's truth to our lives. If we walk in the spirit, huh? If you walk in the spirit, if we walk in the spirit, and by making a point, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the flesh. Hello? By, by, by accepting the Bible for what it is. It is the word of God. And we will, and then we will enable ourselves to live as God wants us to live. Let me ask you, how can a young person stay pure? How can we stay pure? By obeying the word. By obeying the word. By, a, by opening the Bible and reading it right, Sharon. Amen. By doing it, not, not just being a hearer, but a doer of the word. We have to apply the word to our lives. Amen. What would Jesus do? Amen. It's called the principle of first. What? Hello? It's called getting intimate with God. Applying the principle of first. If you apply God first in every aspect of of your life you will not fulfill the flesh but it is going to take amen get rid of all distractions we have to lay aside all all filthiness all evil amen come on come on come on it's the truth it is imperative that we make the bible our daily lives 2 Timothy says this, all scripture is inspired by God. I'm sick and tired of hearing people say it is written by man. It's written by holy men of God, inspired by God. Amen. And, and it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us and to make us and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when, whenever we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Whew. Whenever we apply it. Whenever we apply it. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Amen. It teaches us what is right. It teaches us what is wrong. It corrects us when we get off base. But the only way it is going to do those things is if we apply it. Everybody say apply. apply. Application. Who's, who is going to leave here and apply the word to their lives? Amen. How many here is, how many here is ignoring what is being taught? You guys are listening. <laughs> the only way is going to teach us, and that's if we study it. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needed not to be ashamed, but 
rightly dividing the word of truth. Hello? The only way it is going to show us what we need to change is, is by being in it on a daily basis. All right. Folks, I've got to keep on going. Going. All right. Thank you, Jesus. We got time. But we, you guys have two more hours? All right. But the very next thing James tells us we should be doing is acting on the word of God. I'm telling you, I thought you was going to preach it. And we haven't spoke. <laughs> Acting on the word. Do what it says. Amen. Simply reading, even studying God's word does not profit us if we do not obey and do what it says. You can have all the, you can quote every scripture, but if you don't act upon it, it don't do you any good. Hello? You can know scripture in and out, but if you don't apply it and act upon it, it isn't going to do you any good. If second chance ministry would apply the word and act upon it, oh my goodness, we would tear this community upside down. Whenever we act upon the word and quit fighting each other, we will tear this community up. Hello? Come on. Whenever, whenever that we get out of our feelings, huh, and then, and then get in the Holy Ghost, whoo, come on, somebody, preach with me, come on. James 1, 22 says this, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. We listen to God's message, not just to know it, but to also do it. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew says this in the, uh, in the, the New Living Translation. But anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it, it is foolish. Like a person who builds his house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. <clears throat> in, order, in order for us to make a, a difference, it must enter the heart and mind affecting his or her life. It must be effective. Can we say amen? It is important to hear, to hear God's word but it's much more important to obey it. Amen. In verses 23 and 24, James gives, gives a real life illustration of someone who reads the word without acting upon it. He says, for, it, for, for if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. Sometimes that's an ugly sight. I'm talking to Cain. I'm talking to me. Come on. <laughs> you see yourself and you walk away and you forget what you look like. The person who does nothing more than hear nothing more than hear hear the word. This this regards changes he needs in his character. However, James also says, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and then if you do what it says and you don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Putting it into action. Come on, folks. What God does, it, what, what, uh, what, what good, I said God, <laughs> what good does it do to read the Bible and then don't obey it. You might as well open up the instructions and throw it away if you don't do it. Because that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Hello? We can't just read the word. We have to be doers of the word. Can we say amen? We have to take the wisdom and the insight from the word of God and put it to use. When it says to do something, we need to do it. 
when it says not to do something, we, to, we need to not do it. We need to take the word of God as absolute truth and, and then everything else a lie. Who here, who here knows, uh, knows that the Bible is absolute truth? Amen. Come on. We need to follow that word rather, rather than what society tells us to do. Don't just read the word, act upon it. And then one sure way to act upon his word, and that's to practice it. James 26 and 27. Now, James gives us two ways, two practical ways to act upon his word. Speech and taking care of the needy. Hello? First, he says, if you claim to be religious, but you don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and then your religion is worthless. How can we come into service on a Sunday morning and walk out these doors and cuss someone out? Hello? Put away all filthiness, all naughtiness. Hello? I'm going there. I'm going there just because I was just pricked. It's not in my notes. How can we come to church, go out there and witness to somebody, and turn around and jump in our car and fire up a joint? Hello? How can we come to church on Sunday and go witness to somebody and then turn around and steal from them? Hello? How can we come to church on a Sunday and go and go and witness to, to with somebody and turn around and talk about them? Hello? This is all free. Hello? Come on, Christians. Christ like. If you claim to be religious, but you don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your, and your religion is worthless. God's perfect law should be put into practice in our speech. James, James tells us two major themes that, that we will talk about at a different time. But then one of them is the use of the tongue and the treatment of other people. Young people, are you hearing me? Young people, are you hearing me? How you treat others, God sees it. When, whenever you are beating up other people, God sees it. Hello? Hello? I understand peer pressure, folks. I was in school a long time ago, but I was there. I understand it. It's cool to be that tough guy. It's cool to be that person. But do you know what else is even more cooler? If that's a word. Donna's over here. No. But do you know what is better than being cool? Being in God's perfect will. You see, he is the great I am. He is all that and more, right? He is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the, the everlasting father. And guess what? It goes on and says he is the prince of peace amen so many of us we are walking around not full of peace amen but then we need to get that peace and then you get that peace through christ amen he is the prince of peace his word says it amen and his word is absolute if you want peace amen get in his word apply it and then act upon it amen and then practice it do what it says 
and he will give you peace that passes all understanding. I wish Vicky was up here. Shay was saying, that's what it says. Knowing how to speak well as a great teacher would is, is not nearly as important as having control of our speech. Folks, I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn the hard way. Now, <laughs> am I speaking truth? That old harget inside of me tries to come out and have to bring it un under subjection. Will we... <laughs> It's not nearly as important as having control of our speech, knowing what to say and where and when to say it. The Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth if you let it. Folks, I'm not saying nothing, Dad. I'm not saying nothing that he would say himself. Right, Dad? If you claim to be religious, but you don't control your tongue, you are just fooling yourself. Thank you, Jesus. We can just imagine a series of ways that our tongue dishonors God. Gossip. Angry outburst. Uh, criticism. Complaining. Judging. Our verbal actions speak louder than our religious virtues. Now, let me throw up a curveball. Let me just throw up a little curveball. He mentioned angry outburst. Now, that's wrong, but is it wrong if you... If, if you get angry. Jesus, he got angry. And he sinned not. There are going to be times we're going to get upset. And then there's, and then there's, and then there's going to be times we, we may have to, to amen, boldly say, stop it. That's not sin. Stop it. How many times have you ever told have you ever told your kid, stop it? Hello? There is a difference, and, and then I don't know why I went there, but I'm telling you, I was pricked that we had to go there. But our verbal actions speak louder than our religious rituals. Pretending to be religious. And, uh, and convincing ourselves that we are is not only deceptive to others, it is also a deadly self-deception. Hello? We need to practice what we do to, we need to practice what we preach and chase. So come on up, son. Come on up, bud. And then, in closing, and then I promise, Lord willing, we are going to close. We need to practice what we preach. It does us no good to call ourselves Christians if we do not practice what we preach. We need to apply the word. We need to act upon the word. And we need to practice what we preach. Going in 2022... We must twenty twenty one. I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it's done. But as uh, as Miss Amy always says, let's take what we can learn from it. Every time we would have the pay board meeting, she would put on a smile and says. Let's take something good out of it. Let's take something good out of 2021 and learn from it. 
we are going to apply the principle of first. Applying that principle of first. And that is application. Applying the word. Applying the word. Applying it. Acting upon it. And practicing what it says. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to read the definition of it again. Application. The action of putting something into operation. We're going to put the word of God into operation. Hello? Hello? Come on, church. Hello? Are we going to apply the word which is able to save your soul? It will give us peace if we apply it. If we see others in suffering and do, and do nothing about it, we are not acting like Jesus. Hello? If we see someone in need and we do nothing about it, we are not acting like Jesus. If we hear others r running someone else down and we not only don't do anything to stop them but join in with them, we are not acting like Jesus. If we see injustice in the world and we just turn our heads and walk away, we are not acting like Jesus. The principle of first, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? We all dread hearing someone say, I thought you were a Christian. Can you imagine having that phone call? What's going on at your church? Hello? By our post on Facebook. Hello? It seems like this person and this person. I thought you were Christians. Can, can, can you imagine that? That isn't us, is it? That isn't us. So what are we going to take out of 2021? We're going to learn from it, and we're going to apply, apply, apply the principle of first. We're going to apply it, put it into action. Hello? 2022, application. Everybody say application. application. We are called to be different. Hello? The Bible even says that that you are a peculiar people. Hello? We are called to be different, and that's okay. Young people, it's okay to be different from the world. Come on. You know what? I'll do it. Come on. I'll do it. We are called to offer faith. We're called to offer hope and love to those in need. If we don't, we are not acting like Jesus and have no right to call ourselves by his name. I know that's pretty harsh. But it's the truth. It's the truth. Let's all stand. So moving on, we're out of 2021. We're in 2022. And I press towards that mark. I, you know what? Hey man, hey, man, the Bible says that we are to forget those things which are behind us and press towards the mark of the high calling. Huh? I'm going to press on. Are we going to press on, folks? Huh? Are we going to apply the word of God to our lives in 2022? Let me tell you something. If we apply and act upon his, his word, let me tell you something. We'll be having two or three services, and then we're going to be adding on. And then, you know what? And you know what? 
folks, I'm not talking about building my kingdom. I'm talking about reaching souls, amen. I'm talking about seeing lives change, amen. This isn't about me, but it's about God and seeing lives change. Come on. And James tells us we should be accepting the word, acting on the word, practicing the word. Three things to, to walk out of here with. We must be in the word if we are going to follow it. And after reading the word, we must do what it tells us. And if we are going to call ourselves to be Christians, we need to act like Jesus. Folks, let's find a place, a place to pray. And let's practice what the word says. Huh? Come on, let's all find a place to pray. Thank you, Jesus.